Oh, also, on, on the question here, that, that first question should be, God was both. Yes. Yes. The old people. All right. In uh, John's Gospel, again, we're going to be dealing with... Uh, Again, our foundation of scripture was yeah. Isaiah 45, 45, mm -hmm. and he connected it with uh, Ephesians 4 and 4 mm -hmm. and 5. Mm -hmm. One body and one spirit. And they called what would be a calling. Verse 5, one Lord. Yes. So again we see one Lord means one God. One God. And we connect it with Isaiah 45 and 5. I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no God beside me. Uh, now in, uh, uh, in John's Gospel, uh, if you take note, Verse uh, chapter 5, verse 46. I want to clear up something here. 5 and 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Now, uh, here, uh, God is speaking about the prophet and explaining that the prophet wrote of Jesus because Jesus was God come in the flesh. In verse 47. But if ye believe not his writing, how shall ye believe my word? If you don't believe the original instructions given to the first prophet, you're not going to believe the final conclusion to the story. Uh, yes. Some of the ministers without witnessing today, and that they ran across a minister from the Methodist Church. And uh, they wanted to explain to her about sodomy and lesbianism. And she said, oh, well, I guess she said, I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Or I agree with them. So uh, you you can't get discouraged when you run across people supposedly in the church of God mm -hmm. who have not God in them. Mm -hmm. You can't be a follower of Christ yes. and practice the sins of Satan. Yes. You have to understand that there are choices every individual makes. Mm -hmm. And for a person to claim to be a Christian and only accept certain passages in the Bible and reject other passages. You're not a Christian. That's right. You're a hypocrite. Amen. Coming in the name of Christianity. <laughs> you are a false bearer of truth. That's right, Prophet. You don't understand the scripture. You don't even believe in God. Preach, Why do you dare call yourself Amen. a follower of Christ? Amen. Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. So I'm saying to the church, whenever you run into false spirits, know that it's already preordained to happen. Paul said in the latter times, some shall uh, depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It's going to happen. Not might happen, it's going to happen. So when you are confronted with wrong spirits, the yes. best thing you do is walk away from them yes. and leave them alone. Don't try to debate them. Don't try to argue them. Because if the gospel is here to them, obviously it is, it's here to them that are lost. Yes. And uh, there's no prayer going to help the spirit of unbelief, mm -hmm. especially in this dispensation of time, because you're dealing now with blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. When God is sitting back up on high, he sent his spirit back to indwell. And the scripture teaches plainly that a lot of preachers misinterpret but it says if you sin against the Holy Ghost, yes. there's no forgiveness in this life, which means the present world, or the life to come, which means if you can't get forgiven in this present world, you surely can't get forgiven when you get to glory. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to understand the importance of not getting weak when you see all of the uh, false spirits and in, 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 in the mockery of the Scripture, the blasphemy of the Bible. Don't get alarmed because God said these days, would come. Now, uh, let's go uh, back to uh, the, the Godhead. Uh, 
in Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. Now you can't change any Bible instruction, yes. whether it be Old Testament or New Testament. Now I've said before, any Old Testament statute that has not been corrected by apostolic writing, you have to entertain it and accept it today. Yes. Now, again, the apostles, or rather, the uh, prophets wrote of one Lord. He was God. Jeremiah 10 and 10. The Lord, he's the true God. And uh, the apostles backed it up in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, as we reflected back on. So I'm trying to let you know, there never was any type of trinity or tritheism introduced to the Christian church Amen. until Constantine's takeover at Nicaea in 325. Yes. So we have to understand the importance of being steadfast. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take notice, Matthew uh, 16th chapter, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Back up to verse 14. And they said, and they said Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and others Jeremiah, uh -huh. or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Hallelujah. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Simon said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, when Simon Peter made that statement, he was not speaking about Mary's baby. He was talking about mm -hmm. God incarnate, or God manifest in the flesh. So we have to understand the importance now of the Christ uh, in the title Christ as it comes into the God here, where again proves that Jesus is the eternal God. Now connect this to Romans 9 and 5. Now here again you see where the writer states that Christ is God blessed Amen. forever. Amen. So again, we have to fully be aware and understand that Jesus was God. Even though he came as a son of God to die in the sacrificial evidence of his fleshly body in that context. Now, if you turn to the book of Isaiah, I believe that's the 49th chapter. Yeah. And here it again explains the importance of understanding who it was that died at Calvary and understand the importance of the transformation uh, that God made. Well, let, let, let's pick up in Isaiah 40, 43 and from verse 10. Then we're going to connect this with Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. All right, now, here we see again that Jesus is the only Savior. And if we connect it with, uh, I believe, it's Luke's writing, where he said, Thou shalt have a son, call his name Jesus. Matthew, first chapter, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. All right, so again, we see the connection from the Old Testament to the New Testament that declares plainly that Jesus is the only Savior. Now in Isaiah, 51st chapter, from verse 11, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Verse 12. I even I am, I even I am he that comforted you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as bread? Now here again.